All right, hello everybody. Special little road reflections back in the vehicle. Uh, I have a little bit of I have a little bit of time. I have a short amount of time here to talk about um, the verdict that came out yesterday. Uh, the the Derek Chauvin verdict. Three guilties in a row, baby. Three guilties in a row. Um, so I wanted to I want to say a couple of things about it. I know I kind of posted on my Twitter a whole bunch uh, in regards to that, but I, I want to make sure that we hit some major points. First and foremost being this, I, I don't want to take this away as not a victory because I do think that this is a victory, right? Like this, this is, this is a big win. What this shouldn't be though is appeasement. Um, meaning I don't think that this should be enough that the next time, uh, and, and we already kind of saw this happen is the next time there's a cop that kills an innocent black person or kills an innocent brown person or native person or white person or whoever it is, um, that they get away with it because of qualified immunity because, oh, uh, the, the person that they killed had a, a criminal record 10 years ago. Or, you know, they used to own a gun at some point. They've, they've given a dirty look to a police officer once. And, and, uh, and, and they liked Crystal Pepsi. So the murder is justified. That, because, you know, they can't come out and, and say, well, all of this stuff is now justifiable because, well, Derek Chauvin is now, you know, getting uh, a sentence. What this shouldn't be is appeasement. What this should be is the norm. What this should be is the norm. If a, if a police officer shoots and kills uh, innocent people of color, innocent people, period, all across this country, uh, then they should be prosecuted by the full extent of the law. And as members of the public that would wind up serving on the jury, we should be informed as to what the what the major crux of the problem is, and the major crux of the problem is systemic. Uh, you had people like Amy Klobuchar who protected people like Derek Chauvin. In fact, she did protect Derek Chauvin. Uh, he's known to have a criminal record. He's killed several people in the past before George Floyd, and all he got for it was paid suspension. So he still got paid. So for all intents and purposes, he is a state contracted killer. He is a mercenary because that's what he does. He murders people and still gets paid by the, by the state. So there's no more excuses for these people. This should be the norm. You should go to prison. There's no more. And people that come out and want to try to protect these people, like if they want to try to protect Derek Chauvin or Daniel Pantaleo or, you know, Kimberly Potter or any of these other cops that have murdered people, then these are these are politicians and, you know, personalities and celebrities that are not worth their time. Because they're just wrong. They're objectively just wrong about their opinion. So, again, I don't want this to be an appeasement. I want this to be the example. I want this to be the standard. That's what we should be striving for. So now is not the time for people to say, well, I guess the defund the police movement doesn't need to, to, to go any further than this because look, we put, we put one, of the, one of the guys in jail. He's in jail, so that's enough, right? This is, if, if we get to that argument, that argument is a breadcrumb. And uh, I think what we've definitely learned from this pandemic is that breadcrumbs are not gonna be enough. Uh, we're going to have to fight for a lot more. Uh, and, you know, the Biden administration wants to give breadcrumbs. That's what uh, that's what both of the both of the parties really want. They want us to just accept the breadcrumbs and and, and go about our day and let them commit all of the corporate uh, corporate and um, war crimes across the across the globe. So secondly, we have a lot of other killer cops that we need to prosecute. Um so, you know, let's not get, let's not be quiet about that stuff. We, we literally saw 
you know, it's it's an example of exactly how fucking broken this system is, exactly how uh, brutal this system is, when at the very moment that Derek Chauvin is getting his verdict, and, and you know, there's people celebrating on, on the street, they're celebrating on the internet, they're celebrating in their homes, a 15-year-old girl gets shot and killed in Columbus. So... You know, it's it's not over by any stretch of the imagination because we still have systemic problems within policing that need to be taken care of. And to me, the only option is to fund the police, uproot the system, and start over. That's the only thing we can do. That's the only that's the only logical choice we can make at this point. Police reform is things like shoot them in the leg. Don't, what? Why are cops shooting first? Where's the de-escalation? It's because guys with guns that are on steroids, that are trained to think that everybody that doesn't carry a badge and a gun is the enemy, are always going to kill people. This is what we've been talking about on not just my channel, but people like Lee and, you know, Graham Elwood, Kim Iverson, Nico House... Slow News Day, Missy Winston. The list goes on and on. This is what we've been talking about for years now. That there is no reform to this system. Because this system itself is fundamentally uh, created out of injustice and inequalities. It's, it, you know, that's where the cops come from. The police come from slave patrols. They would deputize white, you know, white peasant landowners, they would give them a bunch of money to say, go get slaves that ran away, hunt them down. That's where the history of the police comes from. It also comes from uh, fighting, you know, strike, uh, strikers, people within the labor movement. Uh, you're going to have a lot of people trying to make that excuse for reform now. And, again, you can't reform this system. I will say, um, I am hoping that this, this verdict will shed some light, uh, for some people that have been on the fence about police brutality, right? There, because I think a lot of people, especially liberals, kind of get caught up in this notion of like, well, we can't defund the police, we need the police. And sure, yeah, we need some kind of law enforcement, right? But is it what we have now? Absolutely not. So I'm hoping that based on this verdict and based on everything that we have seen just in the span of this trial has opened people's eyes to what the true left has been talking about when it comes to law enforcement for years now. Um, you know, and I hope that the, you know, based on the reactions that we saw, that people start stop championing these Democrats. Nancy Pelosi came out and said we should thank George Floyd for sacrificing his life for justice, which is an insane fucking statement to make. And if she would get the ice cream spoon out of her fucking mouth, I mean, this is just as this is just as bad as the shit that they did, where they were like, "We're ending racism by putting African garb on and saying Wakanda forever." Is she racism over now? We finished racism, right? It's my best Nancy Pelosi. She is like the human embodiment of alcoholism and gluttony, and like that's what she is. But. She's making him out to be a martyr instead of a murder victim. There's a lot of people that are like, oh, give her the benefit of the doubt. She's old, you know? And she didn't... She meant something different by what she said. How do you confuse murder and martyrdom? Unless you are that tone deaf, unless you are that out of touch... Or this is narrative control. This is her spinning this, spinning the wheels of the story to say, uh, you know, this is not about criminal justice, but this is about somebody that sacrificed their life for it. 
And instead of making him a murder victim, you make him a martyr and say, well, now that he's gotten justice, we don't need to do anything further to the police system because the police system will just fix itself because of the martyr. It changes the narrative. It changes the meaning of George Floyd's death. It changes what the trial was and it's narrative control. So I, I'm i hoping that there are some squishy liberals that looked at that and instead of making an excuse, they're able to see Nancy Pelosi for who she is. She's a huckster. She's a grifter. She doesn't actually give a shit about social issues. She's a bad person. And now same thing with Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. If they come out and make any statements about, oh, we're going to actually give the police more money so that we can train them to in, in de-escalate. No, no. Well, you know what George Floyd needed? He needed a mental health professional. He was having a panic attack. And if you if if you can't recognize that, then maybe you shouldn't be doing that job. Last thing I do want to add is I hope that you know we do have to wait for the sentencing to come out, and I'm hoping that the sentencing is the maximum, which I think is 75 years for all three counts. And I hope that's the sentence that he gets. I hope it's the maximum fucking sentence. Uh, and I think there's something that, uh, because there was a nine-year-old that's been traumatized by what he did, um, there might be a, a larger sentence that comes out of it. And the other notion, too, is Derek Chauvin is a fucking sociopath. And you can see it. You can see it. There aren't a lot of emotions on his face. When people are on the stand bearing their soul as, as to what they saw when he murdered George Floyd, there's no emotion on his face. None. Even when he was getting sentenced, or not sentenced, when, when the verdict was coming out, he blinked a lot and was kind of like looking around a whole bunch. And then there was an expressionless look on his face. Regular people do not have that kind of a look. An average person would feel something in that instance. He didn't feel shock. He didn't feel anything. That's what sociopaths do. They don't have an emotional register. So he might be able to get... I mean, realistically, like, because because of that, I think he shouldn't be up for parole. Um, because I think he is a person that does not have any remorse for what he did. And all of these, and, and, and all of the things that I've talked about before on this channel, with his record... I mean, NBC was like, oh, it'll depend on his criminal record, which, you know, is non-existent. It's bullshit. He has shot and killed many other people. He has run over people. He has a record of being a violent police officer. The reason why there's no record is because people like Amy Klobuchar didn't do anything about it. And the fact, his demeanor and the fact that he didn't really feel any emotions at all should say that this is a person that is incapable of feeling remorse. And he shouldn't get paroled. He should serve out that 75 years in prison. I know that sounds callous and cruel, but what he did was callous and cruel. And I don't think he is a person that, that can be reformed. That understands and knows the weight of his actions. That feels bad for what he did. He's just not that person. So I hope that he gets the maximum sentence and never sees the outside world again. But we'll see. 
right? Uh, we'll know exactly how the criminal justice system is looking at this, whether this is going to be, hey, this is the example we're setting here uh, versus, um, you know, uh, versus, hey, we gave this guy a guilty verdict, but we're going to use the fact that he's a cop and, and cut him a little bit of a break. And we're also going to offer him like a looser parole sentence. If that happens, and you know the criminal justice system only gave him the only accepted the guilty verdict as appeasement to tell people to stop marching, stop being on the streets. We already got this one guy. What more do you want? So I would say this is not the moment to stop fighting. This is not the moment to stop talking about police brutality. This is not the moment to stop talking about all of the victims that have died, not just in this one year, but in the span of all of the years. This is the time to learn, you know, why the Black Panthers engaged in cop watch. This is the time to learn uh, the true history of policing. And to be on the pulse of this stuff. To know how long this has been happening. So you understand why we are saying that there's no reforming this system. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, I just want to get a couple of those thoughts out there. Um, and uh, and uh, I, I'm hopefully going to be back to, to doing some kind of live streaming next week. Uh, it's been a, it's been a pretty long week, um, and I'm still kind of getting settled into this new schedule and, uh, you know, trying not to be completely exhausted in the afternoons. Uh, so I, I apologize for not having as many videos out this week, uh, but there's a ton of stuff to catch up on. Um, and, uh, if you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, it's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, and go to the donate page, you'll see a statement of transparency in regards to um, what your donations are going to and what your donations are helping me achieve. Uh, and and it's sort of like a, uh, you know, a little bit of accountability in my part. So if I hit my goals, I'll be able to do a lot more stuff. And, um, you know, it'll be better for everybody in the long run, I think. So that statement of transparency is on my website now. I also have merch that I just released, uh, T-shirts, that sort of stuff. If you're looking for that, that link is also up on my website. And the Julian Assange shirts that are there, I'm planning on donating all of those to you know pro Assange groups uh, like Action for Assange or journalists that cover Assange pretty regularly like Kevin Gasola or, or Richard Methurst and folks like that. So... Uh, lots of stuff to check out. So I know it's been a, it's been a kind of a quiet week and there's been a lot going on that I would love to talk about, but, uh, at the moment, you know, the, the schedule is just not allowing me to do so, but I will be back to it, uh, hopefully by next week. Um, and I am taking a lot, uh, a lot more time this week to concentrate on, uh, the virtual show that's coming up on April 30th and, and, and working on that and making sure that it's, uh, it's a good show that I'm excited about and that you guys can also be excited about so uh tickets for those are available on my site as well so uh with all that said and done uh thank you guys for tuning in uh please make sure you like share and subscribe to this stuff um uh, and uh follow me on rockfin to uh, to battle the censorship rockfin.com slash krishmohan haha uh that's going to be the the place where you're, you're going to see a lot more content um sooner than you would on any of the other mainstream video platforms so um, yeah, with all that said and done, you guys are awesome. Thank you for being patient uh, in this transitionary chaotic time that, that uh, I'm going through. And, uh, and hopefully I will see you guys very soon. Uh, but till then, stay safe, keep warm wherever you are, and uh, we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.